Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. Uh, most markets are still hovering near all-time high levels. The Germany 30 is absolutely smashing this morning, going on a little bit higher, as it's looking more and more likely that a grease deal will be reached. Uh, some positive data from uh, Germany as well, but some good data out of America, well, depending if, you've got, if your interest rate focused or not. So we had inflation data yesterday, um, which is a bit higher than expected. And we got GDP due today. Now, a GDP figure of around about 2, 2.1, the expectation of 2.1 will deflate the dollar bill slightly. Anything greater than that, I think, will add extra credence. So we had like durable goods yesterday as well, and we had the CPI data that came in slightly higher than expected. So we've seen some big moves in the dollar um, overnight, and we'll come back to those in a second. But um, that is quite kind of interesting to see that the US there is still beginning to flatten out around about this 18,000 level. So not really a huge amount of trading opportunity in US 30 today. So looking at um, the UK 100, it looks to be that we're almost getting this new triangle formation. Well, not triangle formation, uh, kind of a new trend line on there. So if I just take this point here, you can just see the massive steepening uh, of, these, of these levels. Um, I'm mean, interested to see if that managed at all, but 6906 seems to be the potential pivot. That was the, the all-time high that was broken. So it was resistance, now expected to act as potential support. You combine that, if you look at the tips of these candles, there is a lot of reluctance from the US, for the UK 100, sorry, to break up that that much higher. Just below um, 69, 64. Uh, and that's been in play now for a, for a number of sessions. And um, today's candle, we're already trying to move that little bit higher. So maybe we can get some momentum. So Japan 225, well, the big turnaround we saw in dollar yen has undoubtedly, uh, undoubtedly helped uh, Japan 225. Had a really strong breakout yesterday, but that was also compounded by the fundamentals behind the civil service um, pension fund in Japan switching their metrics for investment from 8% of local equities to 25%. Big boost for Japan 225. And then you have the dollar yen um, reversal as the US dollar massively strengthened. So about 100, 150 points anyway. And then on the end of day charts, it looks, it looks significant. I'm sure on the daily charts, it's not that bad, but um, the dollar bills have a. Uh, Definitely tried to wrestle a bit of control anyway after being a, a, a little bit fast the last couple of days. So that gives you an idea of what's happening with Japan 225. If we move on to dollar yen, um, dollar yen, even though we have had this, this spike higher uh, on the intraday charts, um, this is a daily interval, incidentally, um, it's still kind of hard to get that excited by this FX pair. It's been flattening out in this range for some time. 119 still seems to be um, the level that's going to bounce around for a while. Crude oil came off 5.5% yesterday at one point, um, recovered slightly, still uh, still down on, on the day. We're up about three quarters of a percent right now. Crude oil inventory is obviously much higher than expected, um, but you do have oil production um, issues over in Libya, uh, albeit most of the other Gulf states are, are absolutely fine. There's still a little bit of um, of demand out there. There are prices are slightly supported by a reduction in exploration in the North Sea and many other areas as well. Um, people are trying to talk up West Texas a little bit, but a five and a half percent drop yesterday. I'm sure that's been a little bit shaky for a number of uh, West Texas traders. So longer term potential support still remains at 43.29. Longer term potential resistance, 54.85. So looking at gold, gold probably. Uh, had a strong reversal yesterday. It was looking quite quite bullish there before, uh, before that inflation data came out. And the US GDP figures, when they come, if they come good, gold is obviously uh, potentially exposed to a move to the downside. If it comes in greater than 2.1%, so if we get something like 2.6, I think that would be significant. Big moves in the dollar again, big moves in gold. If it comes in as expected, or two or less than two, then gold will be back back in play and we might have a re-challenge of 12.18. We do have death costs on the moving averages incidentally, so from a technical perspective there is a little bit of weight. Uh, however, if you look at this uh, slow stochastic and the MACD, we're quite close to having uh, reversal signals on there, but they're not yet um, come to fruition. So finishing up with the euro dollar and GBP USD, so that dollar move really smashed that um, ascending triangle formation. That is a proper technical breakout right there. Real decent move. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it moves about 250 points. So, um, quite a decent, oh, sorry, 150 points. Um, but that's still a significant, significant move. You can see it quite clearly there, uh, there in the charts. The potential support level, and actually, if you just go ahead and get the drawing tools out there for a second and add that on there, um, you can see one spot, it's basically one spot 11 is the next potential support to be aware of on there. 
So if we have a look at GBPUSD, strong reversal, uh, bullish engulfing pattern, we stopped pretty much bang on potential support, one spot 54.24, pressure's on though, almost got a golden cross in the moving averages, other technicals are overbought, kind of a, a flip side to what we saw on gold. Uh, but you can you can kind of see they were quite close to getting that crossover. The slow stochastic is overbought. Um, it's almost just about to cross that 80% level, which would be a reversal signal. But we'll just have to wait and see how things uh, pan out with this GDP figure. So let's let's have a look at that. So you've got German um, CPI, so that's going to be interesting for Euro dollar, and it is this GDP figure um, that's at, at 130. Make sure you've got your alert set for that. Um, there is obviously a lot of uh, a lot of information on here to get to grips with a lot of different uh, GDP uh, data uh, results due out. Um, I'm sure that is going to be an interesting day. Uh, so make sure you've got that, that that one there set because after that you still have the housing index and um, you've got the con uh, University of Michigan um, inflation data as well. So that should be quite good for your dollar and cable, uh, but it's GDP that people are pretty much waiting for today as well. So keep around the chart for make insights part of your leg going forward and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.